श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय ऑल माइट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलवड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कठोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू ड्यूट इज जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान स्वामी नारायण ऑन द थर्ड डिसम्बर एटीन ट्वेंटी ऑन द डे ही वॉज सिटिंग इन सुराखा चर्च दरबार इन लोया एट द टाइम इन द असेंबली भगवदानंद स्वामी एंड शिवानंद स्वामी दे बोथ एस्क वट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ अ पर्सन हु हैज फेथ इन गाड एंड हिज सन कपल विद द नॉलेज ऑफ देर ग्लोरी एंड बाई गिविंग द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन महाराज हिमसेल्फ said what would a person who has faith in god and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory not do for the sake of god and his son for them he would renounce his family renounce any public ridicule renounce a kingdom renounce pleasures renounce wealth renounce his wife and in the case of a woman she she would renounce her husband then after giving this brief explanation regarding one's faith in the form of bhagwan as well as his son after that maharaj himself narrated the stories of the devotees who had faith in their life then maharaj narrated the stories of rajput galuji of village dadusar then after kusal kur bai of dharampur then parvat bai raj bai jiu bai ladu bai mota ram bai dada khachar and now today maharaj is going to narrate some stories from the life of mancha bhakt just as at the time of bhagwan swaminarayan we know that many devotees whose last name was khachar and this mancha bhakt he was also from the same caste before joining our fellowship before joining or before becoming a devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan mancha khachar he was not a devotee of bhagwan even though he desired to attain god realization but still he did not get any satpurus or any any kind of perfect way by which he can even understand who bhagwan is but ultimately he had one point in his heart that someone is bhagwan and i have to meet him and in this way as he decided to meet bhagwan face to face in his human life so he was performing many many different different kinds of practices in different different faith but before he meet bhagwan or before he can understand anything regarding our satsang he was in margi panth and he was not a devotee still it is written in vachanamrut and one more time bhagwan swaminarayan himself narrated his story in the vachanamrut 38 of gada second chapter in that vachanamrut bhagwan swaminarayan himself says once Mancha Bhakt of Karyani was indeed a true devotee of God prior to joining the Satsang fellowship he was in the Margi sect however in no way did he lapse in his observance of the vow of non-lust instead he remained a celibate from his childhood once an alchemist was staying at his home at his house after demonstrating how he could transform copper into silver the alchemist told Mancha Bhakt because you are very charitable i shall teach you this spell and so so you how to transform copper into silver but mancha bhakt threatened him with a stick and drove him out of the village telling him i have no desire for anything except god afterwards when mancha bhakt joined satsang he became an ekandik bhakt of god this is what the statement of bhagwan swaminarayan himself in the vachanam 38 of gada second chapter so in this way even he had mancha khachar had no any kind of 
principle he understood regarding our sampradaya or he did not understand anything regarding Bhagwan. Still, when an alchemist he offered him that even you are a very charitable person and that's why I want to teach you this spell so that you can also transfer copper into silver so that you can earn some money and with this money you can do more charitable work. But even for charitable work Mancha Khachar denied and not only that but he drove him out of his village because Mancha Khachar he was the head of the village of Karyani. After he became a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan even Maharaj stay there in Karyani for many times. Even Maharaj celebrated once a Diwali festival there, an Ankot festival in the Karyani. Not only that, Maharaj spoke Vachnamrits in Karyani. In this way, many, many Samaya and Utsav Maharaj celebrated in Karyani also. Because Bhagwan only considered his devotees affection towards him as well as his nishta or we can say faith regarding Bhagwan's form or his son's form. And Mancha Bhakta has such kind of form, uh, firm faith in the form of Bhagwan and his son. So that Bhagwan Swaminarayan described his stories in the Vachanam Vachanam third of Loya chapter. Once Mancha Khachar was as a farmer, as a village head, he was doing his business as a farming in the field. So he had, he was a landlord and once there was a corpse ready to cut in the fields. Fields were, fields are filled with the crops. At the time, Maharaj sent a letter, Mancha Khachar, please come to Garuda for my darshan. So Mancha Khachar became ready to go there for Maharaj darshan. But at that time, one of his family members, he told him, you should not go uh, right now. This is not a time to go there in Garuda because you have this, this is the time to collect your crops from the farm and you can earn by selling those grains. Otherwise, you have no any other occupation, you have no any other business. And if you this time go to Gadada for Darshan and San Samagam, then how can you earn the money for, for the whole year? Then Mancha Khachar said, it's okay, I'll manage the farm. And in this way, after discussing with his family members, the next day, he went to the, one of the house of Sefer and he called him. He instructed the Sefer, you, your brothers, and all the other safers of our village, please send all of your cows and other animals in my farm for grazing. Now, all they ask, but Bapu, you have uh, crops ready to cut. If your animals went there, then definitely your farm will destroy. Then Mancha Khachar say, I want to do that. What I told you, that's, you have only to do that. Then all the safers the next day, they went there with the, all the cows and other animals. And with those animals, as animals started to grass, grassing the field, they, within two or three days, they completed or they emptied the whole farm. After that, Mancha Khachar to, uh, told his family members that now our farm is empty, our farm is clean. And that's why now I can go to meet my Maharaj and Santo. So in this way, this is what his faith, just as Maharaj briefly explained the definition of a person who has a faith in, in the God and his son, coupled with the knowledge of their glory, that Bhagwan says, one who has faith, he can renounce any, uh, he can renounce kingdom, renounce pleasure, renounce wealth, 
renounce his family in this way mahachakachar also renounce his wealth he did not like at the time to bond with the farm or his family members or with the money and without thinking anything else he just renounce all wealth and even thought regarding the bondage of his family and money and all these material things and after renouncing all these things he went to garuda he did darshan of maharaj even maharaj asked him in the sabha not to no because maharaj already knew all these things maharaj is omniscient and because of his divine power he can know at the same time not only for this brahman but also for the countless universes and that's why maharaj knew about this incident but maharaj want to share this incident with the other devotees so that other can learn because if as a saint is if as a renouncing devotee i want to develop my life or if i want to please maharaj living such a successful and a perfect renunciant life then i have to learn i have to study the other renunciant devotees life by the other devotees incident i can learn how to live to please maharaj in the same way for a household devotees they have to learn they have to study the other devotees incident so that by their incident they can learn how they can practically understand how to behave with others how to live a devout life so that bhagwan become pleased upon me and in the same way bhagwan swami and himself also has mancha khachar how did you come here please narrate the narrate your story in the sabha and mancha khachar at the time he while folding his hand and he requested maharaj maharaj this is all because of you i have nothing in me i am not a virtuous from beginning it is only because of you and your santo because of your santo's discourses i can learn this method to renounce everything for the sake of maharaj and sant samagam so in this way mancha khacha describe his own incident so that the other devotees they can also learn from his life this is the one incident by which we can even understand how much faith he has for maharaj so that by single letter he can renounce everything beside besides maharaj and he immediately went there for darshan and, and sant samagam of maharaj and his santo not only that but in another incident when maharaj was there in bhuj and from there maharaj wrote a letter and in that letter maharaj wrote 18 devotees name and sent a messenger with the letter that you must go to all these places and you have to meet all these pers- uh, all these devotees personally and give him read this letter to him and after that it is written in the letter that whoever devotees name describe in the letter that whoever these devotees whatever they are working or whatever they are doing that doesn't matter but as they got this message as they read this letter immediately renounce everything be- behind and please come become a sant and come to meet me here in bhuj so at that time one of the devotees whose name written in that letter that was mancha khachar and when the messenger came that at karyani he was uh um, he was working in a farm mancha khachar hired many many persons in a farm and they are doing uh, they are digging the land for a deep well so that throughout the year if there there will be no rain then at the time they can use the water from the well so even though mancha khachar he was doing this he was working for this project in his farm still as he read the letter as he got the message of bhagwan swami narayan that after renouncing everything please come to meet me after becoming a son so immediately he renounced everything behind and immediately he call a porter and there he ask a uh, saffron color and he himself 
he himself covered himself with a saffron colored clothes and after becoming a sant he immediately left karyani and reach in the bhuj after getting darshan of maharaj he became pleased as well as maharaj also did denver to these paramhansas and maharaj also became pleased upon those devotees and after that maharaj again sent him back now this is only for your examination i want to test your faith in me now you are past you have such kind of faith in me that you can do everything for me and in this way manja khachar again the next time also he saw his faith in the form of bhagwan because with this single letter he had renounced everything behind and become a sant no doubt maharaj had sent him back for his household life but still his faith is faith in the form of bhagwan and maharaj also describe his incident this is a uniqueness in the history of all religion because most of i think not a single religion in which bhagwan describe his duties glory or incident in the case of bhagwan swami narayan he himself describe and narrates his own devotees his own disciple story in the sabha otherwise it is our tradition it is our system that every devotee they sing or they narrate and explain the glories and incident of bhagwan but here it is totally reverse bhagwan narrate the glories and incident of the devotees so this is mancha bhakt of karyani uh, bhagwan swami and after this incident he become very pleased upon him and after getting his invitation maharaj even many times visited karyani and even celebrated many many festivals like diwali and ankur utsav and even maharaj spoke vachanamrut in karyani the 12 vachanamrut of karyani that was also very inter- interesting and many of the vachanamrut they held the many deep religious and spiritual discussion in those vachanamrut this is what maharaj narrated the stories of macha bhakt in the vachanamrut loya third if we imbibe those virtues if we read we listen such kind of incident of devotee's life how much faith they have for the bhagwan what they did for the sake of attaining bhagwan then we can also even at least try in our life to attain the same bhagwan same bhagwan's pleasure and we can also use some of these virtues of those devotees sri ganeshyam maharajani jay
and then he died again. Job on a key con. Amen. Prabhutava Murati Vino the Kari Pala Pana Visare Nahi Jo Visari. जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह गणशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees. Jai Swami Narayan. Jai Swami Narayan. Jai Swami Narayan. Come up here. Yeah, give him a mic. You know, for the past couple of weeks, um, I've been doing katha on this book, Sadguru Muktan Swami. I'm sure all of you have received this book. And there's many different, different topics that uh, are going on. And we're learning how Swami is, how he is, who he is. You know how in school, in history class, they teach you about presidents, right? Like, uh, who, what's your favorite president? Sriji Bhagat, Mike up. Not you, dear. No. Um, oh, you're still in second grade, I forgot. You know all president's name? Huh? Any president's name? Yeah. Go ahead. Barack Obama. What? Barack Obama. Barack? <laughs> this is live, you know that. Okay, Brock. Go ahead, say it. Brock. Barack Obama. Okay, good. Uh, Jay Bogan, you learn about nothing. presidents? No? You're scared? I have nothing. What? I have nothing. You have nothing. The Earth Bogan, give it the Earth Bogan. John F. Kennedy? Oh, yeah, John F. Kennedy. He's a good president. You do? All right, give it to Sri Jay Bogan. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, very good. Anyways, just like how you know you learn about presidents and who they are and things like that. In the same way, in our religion, there are many, many santos. Uh, in the time of Maharaj, there were about 500 santos that were like main santos. And out of all the santos, the most main sant was Muktanan Swami. So off of that, this book was composed by... Um, our Parsad in India. And after that, uh, what I decided to do was, uh, why not do Katha on this topic or this book? So saying that, I wanted to read a charitra and then uh, we'll take a look at how Swami lived in his life. The title is called Invartal, okay? Listen up, I'm gonna ask questions. It was near the end of the summer the land all around thirsted for rain. Sri Hari was present at Gadara. One day he departed from Vartal to fulfill the desires of devotees. He, mount, he mounted Manki, accompanied by some Ghatis at that time. There, they were given incentives of sweet mangoes at the end of the journey, to which they greatly looked forward to. Just simple. Uh, Maharaj is just uh, departed for uh, going for Vartal from Gadara, and he is accompanied by some Gatis. You know what that is? You know who those are? Gatis? No? Who knows what they are? Gatis? Have you ever heard of that? No? No? Never. Yeah, I, 
I had to actually look it up too. Gatis are actually um, just the type of people, like, you know, soldiers, you can say, in that time. So Bhagwan used to have, like, this, like, big group of bodyguards with him. Because, you know, just like how presidents have uh, their secret service, where they have bodyguards in the same way, Bhagwan was with his bodyguards going from Gadara to Vartal. Okay, here we go. So if you, give him a chair if you would like to sit, no problem. We'll give him a mic too. A few miles through the journey, the weather started to roar violently with thunder. Due to strong winds, some dust storms were formed. The horses from the Ghatis could not see through the low visibility conditions. As the, sto so as the storm worsened, Sriyari ordered everyone to return to Gadara. There was a mystery behind this stormy weather, which only God knew himself. So, you know, as they were going on their trip, um, on their horses, bad weather came. And you know how, if you've ever been in vacation, have you been to Disney World? Who's been to Disney World? You have raised your hand. You too? Tirith Bhagat? Jay, they haven't taken you, huh? I'm sure they will. Give it some time. Tirith Bhagat? No? Well, Jay came with you? Well, Disney World, if you were going there and you were super excited, your parents were like, we're going. And uh, you were going on the way to the airport. And suppose a lot of snow and a lot of rain came down and your plane got canceled. Would you be happy or would you be sad? Sad. sad. Who says they would be happy? Triji Bhagat, would you be happy or sad? If the flight got canceled to Disney World, you wouldn't mind. Oh, that's good. Dirth Bhagat. Oh, you're old enough now, right? Now Six Flags, I should put it. Dirth Bhagat. Happy or sad? In the middle. Well, here, Maharaj and all the Hari Bhaktos with them, they turned back. Sri Hari wrote a letter to the devotees of Vartal. We had left Gadara to attend the festival of Bhima Ekadasi. While on our way, we suddenly encountered a st strong storm, and in result, the stones and dust, dust struck the horses' and vi horses visibility, and they be it, their vis visibility became quite poor. So we were not able to arrive in Vartal on Bhima Ekadasi. However, for benefit of others, Muktanan Swami will soon arrive there. So you know what Maharaj did? Maharaj sent Muktanan Swami on his behalf. You know? Like, uh, if I can give you an example. If I sent, suppose you have a teacher, right? And your teacher cannot attend. Your teacher sends a substitute teacher, right? Have you had a substitute teacher before? Yeah. You hate them. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but in the same way, Maharaj sent a substitute on his behalf in the form of Muktanan Swami. So let's see what happens. However, for the benefit of others, Muktanan Swami will soon arrive. Worship him with various ornaments and by sitting him on a decorative swing. Endow him with honor, reverence, and devotion as you would for me. Now let me ask you a question. Maharaj is saying that you should worship Muktanan Swami just like how you worship me. Now, Maharaj is Bhagwan, right? Bhagwan is God. And Muktanan Swami is a Swami in these kinds of clothes up there, right there. In the same way, Bhagwan is saying you should worship Muktanan Swami like you worship me. You should put him on a swing, have him swing back and forth, give him nice ornaments, give him nice foods to eat. Now, let me ask you something. Is this okay? Is this okay to do? Do you know? Or is there any problems in doing this? No. No, it's not okay. I mean, it is okay. Okay, it is okay. Jay Bogan, why is it okay? Can you tell me? I mean, it's not okay. Okay, uh, is it no or yes? No. No. It's okay, no? Or is it okay, yes? What are you saying? It's, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. Why do you say it's wrong? Because they're treating Muktan and Swami, uh -huh. how Maharaj is supposed to be treated. But it's Maharaj's commands. 
Uh, is it still wrong? No. Why? Is it my dad said to do it? Okay. Jay Bogut, what do you say? This is very, very controversial. It's right because Marat said so. But what if Maharaj didn't say? Would it still be right? Um, yeah. Why? Um, because um, you're doing what you're saying. Okay. Dirit Bhagat? I, know. I think it's right because Maharaj sent Muktanan Swami and they should respect him. It's right because Maharaj said, but what if Maharaj did not say? Is that still right? Yeah, because they should still respect them. Right, but respect is to a certain level, right? Respect means to bow down to them, maybe even do some dunlats, right? But sitting Maharaj on a swing, or sitting Swami on a swing, giving him nice clothing, or Swami only wears these kinds of clothings, right? Is that, is that something that, would, is that okay? Still? It is okay because Maharaj said so. But what if Maharaj didn't say so? That's my question to you. What do you say? It's a little difficult to answer, huh? Yeah. Well, here, I'll tell you, okay? So, have you heard of the scripture of Vachnamrut before? Yes? Do you know what it is? I hope he doesn't fall. Do you know what it is? Have you read it before? No. Well, in the Vachamrut, Bhagwan himself says it's a book that just like you know how Bhagwan would speak and someone would write and then it was made into a book. So Bhagwan talked about different different things in this book. Now one of the topics Bhagwan talked about is that such kind of a saint, such kind of a saint should not be thought of being human, nor should he be thought of being a deity. Because such kind of behavior that Bhagwan previously mentioned are not possible in either humans or deities. Indeed, even though that Sant appears to be human, he still is worthy of being worshipped on par with God. Bhagwan says that such a saint is worthy of being worshipped on par with God. Due to this factor, it is right. So whoever said yes, you are correct. Continuing on. Jayanand Verni arrived at Vartal with the letter on the 10th day of Jetsud. At that time, Muktan Swami was with a group of saints and devotees. In the evening, <clears throat> a large assembly gathered under a large banyan tree together with saints and devotees. Kalidas, the chief devotee of the village, spoke with distress. Sri Hari did not arrive. For the last 10 days, we had been waiting for him. At that time, Jan and Verni gave the letter written by Sri Hari to Kalidas. It was read to the assembly with the wave of delight. delight. Meaning what happened was that Ma Swami arrives in the village and pretty much the head chief, Kalidas, is given the letter by Maharaj that you should worship Muktanan Swami just like how you worship you, you should just like how you would worship me. So listening to Sri Hari's words, all the devotees became extremely pleased and happy, but Muktan Swami felt some disappointment. Now let me ask you. If you were given, Sriji Bhagat, if you were given a very, very good, what's your favorite um, electronic item? Let me put it that way. My iPad. Your iPad. If you were given the best iPad right now available, okay? If you were given the best clothes, if you were given the best everything, the best food, the best house to live in, right? And you were told that, you know, you can use this to however you want to. Would you become happy or would you become sad? Happy. Happy. Why so? Because I love playing on my iPad. Not only your iPad, but what else can you do? Do you, do you really like playing on your iPad? Yeah. What if it broke? Would you, buy, would you uh, ask for a replacement? No, then I can't play with my iPad. Then I won't get another iPad. 
No, would you, would you ask for another one? Would you tell your uh, mother and father to get you another iPad? I would, but they would say no. Why would they say no? Because, uh, because I, my iPad is so much money. Right. It's really expensive, right? In the same way, over here, Swami, you know, he is being offered a very, very high seat, praise, a lot of, a lot of ego. Let me ask you, who would want to come and sit here where I'm sitting right now? You don't have to become a Swami. If I told you right now in this Katha, let's take a pause and you can just walk up these stairs and you can come and sit right here. Who would take the chance to do so? I and won't. You can be, and you can be on camera and you can, everyone can see you. Everyone in the hall can see you. Would you like that? No. No, why not? I won't wanna. I won't wanna sit on what you're sitting on. Why not? Isn't it like high? Isn't it where everyone can see me? It looks really nice. Yeah. Uh huh. But it's only for Santo. Okay. Suppose that this wasn't uh, this color. It was a white color. Then. I still won't sit. Why? Because I don't want to be on a camera. Oh. Okay. Jay, what do you have to say? Would you sit on one of these? Places, everyone, suppose the whole mandir is filled, the balcony, everyone is filled with Hari Bhaktos, you're on live camera, and you get to say whatever you want to everyone. Would you do this? No. No, why not? Because I don't like staying in front of big crowds. Okay, are you scared of big crowds? Kind of, I want to talk. Kind of, what if you don't have to talk? What if you just get to enjoy and sit, and everyone comes and puts hearts and garlands around you. Is, would that be okay? No. Why not? I don't like doing that. Santo is that, that most of us. Very good. You wouldn't like people giving you hearts? What about like just handful of candy and <laughs> they, they uh, give you everything that you want? Would that be okay? No. No? Why not? That's too much. It's too much. Okay. So you're satisfied. Santo. Yes. yes? All right. Dirat Bhagan. I wouldn't do that. Why would you not do that? Because I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Why do you say you don't deserve it? Because I haven't done anything to have that right. But what if Santos give you an option of doing it? I wouldn't. Still? Yes. Okay. Well, here's what happened. Muktan and Swami got the high seat. He got to sit where <clears throat> on swings and he got to get, you know, uh, hearts put around him. But... It says here that he was disappointed. He was disappointed because he did not like sitting on such, he didn't like the praise or the ego. All of you, all three of you passed the test because you said no. If you would have said yes, you would have failed. But you passed because you don't want any of this. But let's say, let's say you become older and older and older. Then if, when you get older, I'll ask you the same question. So you better remember and your answer should not change, okay? That's a good thing. On the next day of Bhimika, the Sri devotees prepared a beautiful decorated swing of flowers under the banyan tree and requested Muktan Swami to sit while wearing highly precious gar garments and ornaments. Muktan Swami engaged his mind on the form of God and warmly took a seat on the swing. All the saints and devotees one by one worshipped Muktan Swami with kumkum and applied sandalwood paste on his forehead. They offered flowers and garlands and offered baskets of mangoes. In fact, devotees felt no absence of Sri Hari and experienced the same bliss of God's divine form. Do you know that Gadi? Or do you still remember? Do you have you learned it? You can sing it aloud, all three, if you do. Santa Hune Hute Badi Santare. Ema Shri Mukhe Kahe Bhagavantare Santa Mana Jo Mari Murati Re Tema Pera Nati Ekarati Re You may not know the Kari, but do you know what it means? No. You've never heard of it, huh? It's kind of like, what is he talking about? You heard of it. Do you know it? Okay, that's okay. But... Bhagwan is saying, the Sant and myself are one. They are not different. Can you believe that? 
Can you believe that, Swami, can you believe that suppose Guruji was here and Guruji and Bhagwan to be one, can you believe that? Would you believe that? Press the button. No. no. Why would you say that? What's the reason why you wouldn't believe that? Give, share your reason. Wait, what did you say again? If I told you that Guruji and Maharaj are one, there is no difference, would you believe me? No. No. Why not? Because Maharaj and Guruji are separate. Separate in how so? Are you like, looking in a physical way? Not like, like not like they're like separate that they're not together. Uh huh. They're like separate that they can't be two one. Why not? I think they can. You think you can, they can now? You're changing your answer. Uh, I don't get. I I can't get it. Okay. Let's let's see what Jay Bhagat has to say about this. Um, they can be one. They can be one, or are they one? They can be one, or are they one? Or are they? They are one. Yeah. Why so? Because um, um, he's doing as much as what God is doing to us. Wow, good answer. Okay, the Earth Bhagat? They can be one. Why so? Because Maharaj is still in Guruji's heart or any son's heart. Wait, isn't he in your heart, or in Jay Bhagat's heart, or in Triji Bhagat's heart, or that Dada's heart over there? Or Bhagat's heart here? Or my heart? You get it now, don't you? Isn't he? Wait, where is he? Is he uh, over there? Where's Bhagwan? Is he right there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, where else is he? Could you show me? Is he up there? Where? He's in the paintings. He's in the paintings, okay. Okay, oh, wait, show me. I can't see him. What about... Oh, right there. Okay, very good. Yeah? He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Okay, but let me give you an example. Have you ever had that candy? Um, what's that candy? Uh, the, the, Tootsie, uh, the Tootsie Pop? Have you had that before? You know? Yes? Now, you know there's Tootsie Pops that have gum inside, right? Now, on the outside layer, what is there? It's candy, right? Like, give me a flavor. Orange, okay? What's on the inside? No, what, what's on the inside of the orange? Gum, right? Now, is the gum and the candy, is it two different things? They are. But what does it seem like when you open up the wrapper? They seem one, right? Yes? In the same way, Guruji is there, he's sitting, or if he comes here, he's here, but inside of him, Bhagwan is there. Bhagwan is the essence, you can call him the gum, and Guruji is the orange candy, you understand? You get it now, don't you? Yeah. In the same way, over here, Swami was worshipped, and Swami was worshipped just like how God would be worshipped. Now let's see what happens. The saints sang devotional songs accompanied by musical instruments before Muktan Swami. After that, Swami delivered the knowledge of God. Sajan Swami is the Supreme Lord. Who is He? Yes. He is independent. He gives happiness through the company of saints. Swami said He gives happiness through the company of saints. In Bhagavan's Vachnamrut, again, Bhagavan says, I forever reside in the eight types of murtis and in the sant. Meaning, Bhagwan forever lives inside of the uh, of the sun. You understand? We should be happy in obeying his commands. Swami continued, "Dear devotees, I am an insig insignificant sadhu. By God's command, all of you worship me, but I am the very lowest servant amongst all of you." Could I ask you something? Who is a servant here? Sriji, you're a servant? Uh, Are you a servant? Do you serve others? Sometimes. So you're sometimes a servant? Yes? Not all the time? 
Yes or no? Uh, all the time. You're a servant? You know, no. servant. No, you're not. No. Sometimes. You're not a servant? I am. You are? <laughs> Which one is it? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. You're a servant? You serve other people? You do that? No. No. You're not a servant? No. You're not a Which one is it? I'm getting confused here. You got to tell me. I serve sometimes, not all the time. All Okay, so you're half a servant. Okay. All right. Very good. Jay Bogat. You're a servant? Servant to who? Good question. Servant to What do you say? Who are you a servant to? God. God? Anyone else? Then Guruji. Anyone else? Santo. Anyone else? My parents. Anyone else? I don't know. That's it? No one else? I don't know anyone else. No not Haribukto? Oh, yeah. You don't you don't serve Haribukto? Yeah. Yes. I would. Yes? So you are a servant? I don't do it all the time. Not at home? You don't serve Maharaj food? You don't serve your parents? I do. Then you do it all the time? So are you a full-time servant or you're a part-time servant? I don't know. You don't know, huh? I'm part-time. You're a part-time. I like that. What about you? You don't? I don't know. Okay. Dirith Baga? I'm part-time. You're a partial servant. Yeah, but you're, Part- you're full servant. To I'm God. a full servant. Thank you. I would I would like to be a full servant of God. I appreciate that. But you're a uh, half a servant. Yeah. Well, you know what? All of you said you're half servants, but you can all become full time servants like myself without becoming a swami. You understand? How so? By serving God. You do that every day. Do you not do puja? Yeah. Yes. So that means you're a servant there. Yeah. Do you offer food to Bhagwan in your Sihasan? Yes? You never try that? You're still learning. Uh, do you do Santo Seva? Yeah. Yes? Okay, then how about doing Haribokto Seva? Yeah. Yes? What about serving your parents? Yes? Should you make it? Yes? Serving your parents? He's here. Say yes. He's sitting right there. Okay. All right. Anyways, in the same way, you are all completely 100% servants. Just like how I'm a servant of Bhagwan, you also are a servant of Bhagwan. And Muktanand Swami is teaching us here to become servants. You know that kadi? Hari ke das. Can you sing that for me? Ready? One, two, three, begin. Louder. Good. So that means all of you are servants and 100% you have graduated of becoming servants of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Okay? That's the story of Sadguru Muktanand Swami and how he was worshipped uh, on par with God. Uh, next week we'll continue uh, our lecture on Swamiji's life. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan.